Firstly, agriculture is 28% of our economy, a very large um, asset class base that only gets 2% of the traditional lending from, from commercial banks to the private sector. So if you look at the mismatch, 2% financing to a sector that is a third of the entire economy, there's a huge mismatch there. And these are opportunities for people to invest in but then it needs to be securitized, which is the role of FX. So FX stays at that point where it tries to securitize and sterilize agricultural assets to the point where they are bankable, but also create a new investment class for the public. Uh, but for broader stakeholders, there are business opportunities across the value chain. And as an industry leader, we want to hear, listen, understand um, the thoughts but foster co-creation of ideas. Uh, we are a market player, uh, market, we are a marketplace where players can play on. So um, be it finance players, be it tech players, be it uh, agricultural entrepreneurs, uh, we, we provide options to enhance their efficiency and then be able to do better business. What's your assessment of Nigeria's agriculture sector now? bearing in mind that the government has been channeling a whole lot of effort towards diversifying the economy. What's your general take on it? I think um, the signal of this administration shows that um, agriculture is very, very important um, and it's very strategic. And um, I, I, I very fondly say follow the money. So if you look at how important the central bank and a lot of its intervention recently most re um, has placed agriculture and have channeled adequate resources not just financial uh, but broader people thinking capacity um, outreach and extension it shows to you that the broader um, governments actually place importance to this um, i think that's one of the strongest signals that you see um, if you also look at the latest announcement by the presidency increasing the share of cash going to agriculture um, in the last defect disbursement by five folds the plan was 200 billion uh, and then it went to, a, to 200 billion to a billion um, i think that also gives you the importance at the highest level of government by which agriculture is placed um, and it's not just the talks but the body language and the gesture um, also demonstrate that this is important to them but i think the, the the opportunities and the challenges to be solved is just enormous there's so much that needs to be done from our seed sector to our cpps and our policies um, to the broader agribusiness space to the issues around land access to broader infrastructural challenges that affect all other sectors as well uh, but more importantly affects agriculture because it operates right from the most rural parts of the country. Uh, smallholder farmers um, that earn less than $1,000 per annum produce 85-90% of our food as a country. Um, and if these people aren't in the mainstream planning of the country, then the problem is not just at their level, but it is a national crisis, Alingo. During the session, some of your panelists actually mentioned how analog most of the farmers in Nigeria are so how can we make you know the technology of um, agriculture accessible to a whole lot of them I think the best way to 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 operate in a digital world is actually to live in the analog world and understand the real pains of the farmers um, understand their that there wouldn't be internet when you get to the farming communities in northern Nigeria understand the fact that um, there is a language barrier because a quite a number of them, even though are educated, will not read and write Arabic, uh, English. Um, and those are real challenges that would steer. But I think those are opportunities. And I think those are also opportunities that create a niche for Nigerian tech space to create locally adaptable solutions that solves this problem. Um, we, you know, we, we've, we've faced that same problem working with world-class technology solutions to provide efficiency that the financial capital market needs. And then the challenge and what we've put a lot of resource to is how do you customize the solutions to meet the problem? And how do you break the communication into little snippets that the farmers can go home with and feel educated and happy? Apex Commodities has been um, investing a whole lot in technologies to improve the efficiency of the farmers but how are you making this uh, technologies affordable to the farmers so basically it's um do you sell technology as a tool or provide it as a service so we even though it's we've invested in a trading platform almost 10 million dollars 
um, to get a trading platform that meets world-class standard. Um, the, the challenge is how do you then break the business model down to charge that farmer that solution as part of the service delivery to the farmer for providing inputs during or accessing finance at the beginning of the season to selling commodities. So we don't charge any farmer a fee for technology. We provide it as part of a, tech, a, a solution enabler that helps us deliver and reach them more efficiently and creates a scalable backbone for the business. So for um, agriculture to function properly in a digital world, we obviously have to start looking at bringing people who are tech savvy, the younger generation, people who are much more aware than the average farmers in Nigeria. So what strategies do you think can be applied to you know, attract these set of people into the sector? I think the first very, very key thing is to get people in their comfort zone to start talking and thinking around agriculture. And I think that is one of the core essence of this meetup today, to say it's not about what we know and we want to tell you, it's about what we all know that we want to discuss. It's about discussing solutions that are scalable and can meet the needs of agriculture as a critical sector for the country. And I think that's why we've brought in all players from within and outside the country to say, how do we co-create? How do we co-think and co-develop such that you know we can move from the tech hubs in Lagos, solutions that are scalable in Maradi, in Jibia, in Zaria, in Ondo, and across agricultural hubs across the country, um, regardless of ethnic or, or language barriers. And then that drive down costs, but also increase the income earning capacity of these farmers. I think that discourse um, needs to have the finance players that would always create that catalyst and leverage for the sector. But it needs the tech coders to also understand the problems that the agricultural people present and also understand the willingness to pay of people in that sector. What are players interested in and willing to pay for?